Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Colossians chapter 1, we'll begin reading today. Um, I don't want to have to read the whole chapter. Let's start in verse 23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled... Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard of, heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but is manifest to his saints, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is, here's the mystery, folks, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, Wayne, a Weiss translation, Weiss translate says, the hope of the glorious things to come. But what we're majoring on right here is this, Christ in you. Everybody say, Christ in me. Christ in me, not, not going to be in Christ in me. This is a mystery. Now, folks, I want you to know, it's a mystery to everyone. Now, how can Jesus Christ be in us and be at the right hand of the Father? I don't know, but it's a mystery. Amen. But it, he is. It's Christ in us. Everybody say, Christ in us. Not, on, not just us. See, under the old covenant, they had the, the prophet, priest, and king had the, the Holy Spirit on them. The church has... The, Jesus in us. And the Bible says of all those guys on the Old Testament, they looked and saw our day and wanted to live in our day. Glory to God. Why? Because they didn't just want to have bone them, they wanted to have them in them. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And so the mystery's been hid, but it's manifest now, and the mystery is this. Christ in you. You ought to get excited over that. Jesus is on the inside. We always, I, my, my family prays this dinner prayer. They heard it sometime when I was about, about 10. They've been praying it ever since. Now, we used to pray, God is great, God is good. By his, fans, by his hands we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Now, it came out with us like this. God is great, God is good. God, I mean, it came out so fast, but I didn't even know what we were saying. But then one year, Aunt so-and-so went and heard somebody pray, and they prayed this prayer, Come, Lord Jesus, and be our guest, and let this food to us be blessed. Amen. They're still praying it. That's been 40 years. Now, here's the problem with that. Jesus is already here. He's not coming to be your guest. He's already taken up residence in your heart. Now, I, I just like, you know, sometimes we pray stuff or we say stuff or we get little cliche sayings, and what happens is we develop a mindset. Even though we read scriptures that say something different, our mind says something else because we've been saying something else. You know, how about that song? How about the song? Y'all remember this one? Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart cry. That's it. We we me down here. He's out in heaven. He showed up for a moment, and now he's leaving again. No. Now see, it, we, we kind of sing these songs, you know. And, and no, it, it's not Jesus on the road to Damascus or something. You're reaching out and getting healed while he walks by. He's already here. If two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. He's already there. And for on the individual basis, as a believer, the mystery of the new birth is Christ in you. Everybody say, Christ in me. Christ in you know, a lot of times, we, you know, uh, and I understand this, I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my salvation. But the truth is, you know, he's already living in you. The life's already in you. We have got to learn to live from the life on the inside. Amen. 
We keep waiting. Now, listen, I understand and I even teach about the spirit within and the spirit upon. But we've got to be un first recognize and become aware of, fully aware of the resonance of the master within us. There's anointings he gives us to help empower us to do different things that come upon us. But he's already resident within us. And we have to become aware of that. And we have to become sensitive to that. Can you say sensitive to that? Say Christ is in me. It's the mystery of the church. Now, when I ask y'all to say something, I need more than three of you participating. All right, we're going to do, get up and do the hokey pokey this morning. I'll make you put your left foot in and your left. We'll make you put your whole backside in. All right, so amen. amen. Thank you. I figured that would help you out a little bit. Christ in you, the hope of glory, or the hope of the glorious things to come. Thank God there's, once he's in you, there's glorious things coming to your life. Look with me, if you will, over into Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God's rhetorical question gets a rhetorical answer. God forbid! How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him and by baptism in the death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I said walk in newness of life. See, the life that's been imparted into you is not the old life. Now, we're going to get to on Wednesday nights. Uh, we'll get over to Romans chapter 7, you know, the schizophrenic chapter. Amen. You read that, you know, I do that which I wouldn't do, that which I would do, I don't do, and that what things I want to do, I can't do. You know, and he goes on and on. What's, and see, and I'm just going to give, make it real easy for you. That is the battle of the new creation man on the inside dealing with the dictates and desires of the flesh. See, before he got saved, you didn't have that problem. Your spirit and your body just went together. They're both crazy. Amen. They wanted to sin, they went and sinned. Now that you're born again, your flesh still wants to do sinful things, but your spirit wants to serve God. Amen. 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 Now, so, you know, and listen, I, and I know this, you know, we thought, well, well, my old nature wants to do that. Well, really, yeah, I get it. You know, put off the old man, put on the new man. So your, your body, so Romans chapter 7 is I, I, the schizophrenic chapter. It's the chapter where the, the spirit of man and the body of man, the spirit of the regenerated man and the body of that regenerated man who's still not regenerated. Your body is not saved. How many found that out? You don't believe it? Take your, listen, I, I, this, is, this, is pretty, this is pretty blunt, but you know, take a playboy and go lay it on a grave and see what happens. They're dead. Their body is dead. Go show some Christian guy and put that in front of him. Now, you'll get a reaction. I mean, he had to, may have to slap it away, but his flesh is still alive in, in the sense that it's not dead in the ground. All right? You have to put that flesh under. You have to keep yourself away from that. You have to sustain things. You have to offer your body a living sacrifice unto God, which is a spiritual service. You have to buffet your body. You have to keep it under. There is a battle between the spirit of man who wants to serve God and your flesh who wants to go back to the old things that it came out of. It loves the old things it came out of. Amen? I don't, listen... I know that in all you can eat buffet is not good for you, but if I go to one, I still do, do, do harm. So I just stay out of them. I keep my body under. Why? Because if you go to the all you can eat buffet, you're going to do stuff there you shouldn't do. Gorge yourself. Come on now. You know? And the only reason you go to an all you can eat buffet, it is, no, it is not so you can discipline yourself. You almost feel obligated. To stuff yourself like a pig. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. You know, and have you ever noticed you can go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, you can order from the menu, from the all-you-can-eat, and you just look at the menu price, you look at the all-you-can-eat price, and somehow your mind goes, go for the all-you-can-eat, you just eat one plate. How many do that? No, not in this place either. I didn't think so. Now, your flesh still has desires. 
Amen. It still has dictates. But see, there's a life on the inside that is greater than the desire of the flesh. And the Bible says that even as Christ was raised from the dead, we also should walk in newness of life. Galatians says this, He who says he abides in him also himself so to walk even as he walked. <coughs> that was my first sermon I ever preached. Yep, took me 10 minutes to go through all my notes. I got to the end and thought there's no way. Went back to the top and started over. It still took 10 minutes. So I preached my first sermon twice in 20 minutes. Those were the days, my friend. They surely have come to an end. I can't even open in 10 minutes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but he says here that even as, even as he was raised from the dead, that we should walk also, I mean, we should walk in the newness of life. See, on the inside, there's a new man. Everybody say, there's a new man. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be what? In Christ. And if you're in Christ, then Christ is in you. He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18 says, and all things are of God. Verse 21 for he's made him sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So now on the inside of us, in your body, we got, now listen, here's the glorious thing. Ephesians, the first chapter says we have a promise, we have a seal by the Holy Ghost that this purchased possession going to get redeemed. When? When the trump shall sound, or the archangel. Amen? And the, and the dead in Christ shall rise. But they dead shall not, or those which are asleep shall not prevent them which are alive. For we which are alive and remain, hallelujah, shall be caught up. And this corruptible shall put on incorrupt. I mean, this, yeah, this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. What happens? The promise of the redemption of your body takes place at the rapture of the church. It's coming. But in the meantime, you got to put that rascal under. Romans chapter 12, we quoted it earlier. It says, you know, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, that don't sound pleasant, does it? He did not say present your bodies to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Didn't say because you're under grace, you can do whatever you want to do, and it just don't matter. He said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. But how do you do that? It goes on the next verse, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable, or good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Transform means, meta, it comes from the Greek metamorpho, just like a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. You have a metamorphosis. You learn to live out of the inner man who's alive unto God, where Christ is in us. There's a greater one in there. We are, we, are, we are fashioned and shaped in that inner man to look just like Jesus, glory to God. We're born of him. Now, listen, I know people get upset over that, but you know the Bible says they were first called Christians at Antioch. That word Christian means little Christ. Literally in the Greek means little Christ. Now, we're not Jesus. But we're born of him. And if we're born on him, we're going to take on his nature. We're going to look like him. Now, my son's not here today, but, uh, you know, one day we we're kind of looking at, at our, our pointer fingers, and his pointer finger is just like mine. Got the same curve, the same shape on it. I mean, it's exactly like mine. So, you know, somebody say, well, you don't look a lot like your dad. We just put our fingers up. <laughs> Take a look at that, buddy. That's my boy. <laughs> Amen. I mean, just, you know, every once in a while, you know, well, you look more like a glisten. No, there you go. There's the, there's the tailor right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, how people say that Shannon looks like me and Jesse looks like her mama, I don't get it. Y'all see Jesse's baby pic younger pictures. I mean, that looks like my daddy. <clears throat> Amen. You know, parents, offspring take on characteristics of the parent. We're born of God. Our spirits have taken on the image of our Father. 
and we're not God. But I'm born of God. Therefore, spiritually, I'm going to look like my dad. Now, don't you know the devil had a fit on the day of Pentecost? I mean, he got Jesus buried, killed, buried. Yeah, he rose up and he went on up into heaven. And then all of a sudden, there's 120 who look just like him. See, Satan's over in the spirit realm. Now, ah, here we go again, me and Brother Bill. <laughs> when Jesus breathed on them, receive you, receive you the Holy Ghost, they were born again, you know, so on the day of Pentecost, 30 days before, in that time frame. But they all got born again. Now there's a bunch of people, that, people walk around who look like Jesus to the devil. Right. They're born of God. The life of God's in them again. Do you know that the Bible even said that, called Adam the son of God? Because right. God took of his spirit and made Adam. Adam looked like God. I mean, he wasn't God, but he looked like him. Spiritually, the life of God was in him. And we also should live in the newness of this life. This life abides in us. Oh, say, thank God. Thank God the life of God abides in me. We're to walk out of that life. In other words, our walking, our, our, our conduct. The King James uses the word conversation, which is an old Elizabethan term meaning manner of life. How you live. Okay? So we're going to talk about, you know, uh, cell phone talk or texting. Our manner of The life that we live. <clears throat> comes out of the life of God. What did the scripture say? In him we live and move and have our being. Glory to God. Woo! I said, woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my Pentecostal is about to come out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We do the chicken. I used to call it the Pentecostal chicken. Because your neck would get to go. Hallelujah. My God, today there's a life in me. Hallelujah. The world is full of darkness. The world is full of death. The world is draining you of everything, tries to drain you of everything. But on the inside, hallelujah, I want you to know that there is a life that there is no end to, praise God. It comes from the Father above. Christ in me. The hope of glorious things to come. Glory to God. And because he's been raised from the dead, I should walk in newness of life. Because the great one, the mighty one, the conqueror, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, he who was, he who is, and he who is, is to come. His life is in me today. Hallelujah. There's a law working in me today. Hallelujah. Romans the 8th chapter says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. John G. Lake was, I'm just, you know, we, we told this, but I, I can't, this, this just bears bearing out. That law, it's a law. Just like you walk off the top of this building, gravity will pull you to the ground. It's a law. But there is a law working in your members right now. Yeah, in the world there is the law of sin and death. And you know, in the world we have gravity. And great, big, huge jet liners take off with gravity. Because there's a law of thrust and lift that supersedes it. Gravity's still pulling on it. But thrust and lift overpowers it and takes that jet liner up to 33, to 35, to 39,000, wherever they want to go. And they fly around the world and they land. And as they slow down the thrust, the lift lessens and it comes down and lands. Yeah, the law, law of sin and death's working around you. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus supersedes the power of the law of sin and death to pull you down and to destroy you. It lifts you. It raises you. It's at work in you.
glory to God. And when you come face to face with the worst that the law of sin and death has to offer and can bring your way, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Hallelujah. I want you to know that that law, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. We can look to the life within. Woo, glory. That'll make a Pentecostal out of a Presbyterian. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you, I'm telling you right now, it'll make you shout when you come to the revelation that there is a life on the inside of you that has been granted unto you by God Almighty where Jesus Christ now is in you, the hope of your glory, glory to God. He's living in you. He's abiding in you. That life is in you. It is resurrection life. It is lifting life. It is overcoming life, glory to God. And whenever the devil throws everything at you, including the kitchen sink, You begin to rejoice with the Apostle Paul. And you begin to lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of the life on the inside. You can look at everything the devil's got. You can look at everything he's throwing at you. And you can just say, now thanks be unto God. Which always causes me to triumph through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where did Paul get that? How did Paul come up with that? He, was, he faced a lot of stuff. Perils in the deep and perils in the city of perils in my own countrymen. And perils here and perils there. Three days and night in the deep and fasting often and then hungering often. Three days, I mean, three times I received 39 stripes, I mean, 40 stripes, save one. On and on and on and on he goes. But then he gives that testimony in the second book of Corinthians, hallelujah, and says, now thanks be unto God. Which always causes me to triumph. Why? A life on the inside of you is victorious living life. How do you know? Because when death had Jesus, when the grave had Jesus, when the, the, the tormentals of hell were tormenting Jesus, death couldn't hold him down. The Bible says this, that it was not possible that he be held by it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Bible says he stripped himself the principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. Or he spoiled principalities and powers. It means he stripped himself of them. Colossians. Spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. All that death had, all that hell had, all the demons, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, everything that came against Jesus to stop him from fulfilling the plan of God. And the Bible says he spoiled them. He hurled them back. <laughs> you think some little devil is going to be able to stop the life of God on the inside of you? You think that the cohorts of Satan can come and stop the, li the life of God on the inside of you is there to, to bring to pass? Do you think that there's anything the devil's got that's greater than the greater one on the inside of you this morning? Praise God. No, thanks be to God that it is the mystery of the world is now Christ in me, my hope of glorious things to come. I want you to know that demons tremble when we walk into the room because they see Jesus in you. They're not afraid of you as an individual. They're afraid of the ones on the inside of you. My God. Well, how do I get him being in me to operating out of me? Go to Philippians. Hallelujah. Where's Philippians? Right after Ephesians? Right before Colossians? How do you know? Some guy I used to work with, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. He's a general electric power company. That's how he's, how he's kept the four, those four epistles straight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Where are we? Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So sometimes we read the Bible and it'll mess up your theology. I said, we read the Bible and it messes up people's theology. People say stuff, you go read the Bible, don't say it in the Bible. 
but made himself of his no reputation, took on the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Now, the Bible right here means this. He stripped himself of One translation says this. He stripped himself of his rights to deity and the glory and walked among us fashioned as a man. And being found as fashioned as a man, he humbled himself. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also highly exalted him and have given him a name which is above every name. Oh, praise God. Sometimes we use it, the name of Jesus is used as a cuss word. They use it all the time in movies. People will say Christ or they'll say Jesus. They'll use it just like a cuss word. How many, how many of you ever been to a movie and they went, Muhammad, I'll be Krishnad. Hello? Well, Dalai Lama. You ever, have, you, have anybody ever been to a movie and you heard that? No, but Jesus you do. Why? Because see, none of those names have power. None of those names have authority. None of those names can break the back of demons. But there is one name. Everybody say, there is one name. Oh, glory be to God. In the mouth of those who have Christ in them, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. That at the name of Jesus, there is given him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And things in heaven, and the word things is italicized, and really it's not things, it's beings. You know, you could just say that and just say, uh, every knee should bow. Well, I mean, no, beings have knees. So beings in heaven, beings in earth, be, now see, italicized King James, not in the Greek, was put there. They thought it would help out. They should have just used beings, not things. All right? In heaven, earth, and under the earth, and every tongue. See? Got knees and tongues. They're beings. Should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of Father, of the Father. Hallelujah. We get, we get the resurrected Christ who lives in us. Say, He lives in me. What did Jesus say in the book of Revelation? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I and my Father will come in and sup with him and make our abode with them. Hallelujah. Now he's granted unto us. Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Demons. The forces of darkness. I'm telling you, we're facing dark times in the world. But don't be afraid. Oh, the master said, in the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Why? I've overcome the world. Y'all about ready to shout yet? Some of you going to be riding down the road on the way home going, say, well, I got to pull off the road. We might ride by. You'll be out the other side of your car going, whoo, glory to God. What's going on with them? They just got it. They just got it. What they get? That Christ is in them. Their hope of glory. The demons in the darkness of this world cannot overtake them because they've got the name and that demon and that force and that circumstance must bow its name to the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God. <laughs> We thank God for the name. We thank God we're born of him. Now, see, it don't work for unbelievers. How do you know? There were seven sons of one Sceva who went about, who were exorcists, and they went to one guy and said, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And the demon, said to, the demon and the man said to them, said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And he jumped on them and ran them out of the house, and they ran out naked. Naked, And this was noised abroad what took place. And the church grew. Now, you see, you see Paul using the name of Jesus, and demons don't come up and go, Jesus I know, but I don't know who you are. See, Paul was born again. Those seven sons of Sceva were Jewish exorcists. They didn't vagabond Jews, actually. Vagabond Jew, Jewish exorcists. It was a money-making deal for them. They would come in and try to, you know, get the devils out. And they, found, they heard that the, the devils would come out by that's Jesus that Paul was preaching about. So they said, well, we command you to come out by Jesus whom Paul preached. They didn't, see, they didn't have the Christ living in them. So the authority to use the name wasn't resident within them. Hallelujah. 
Are you here? There was a certain woman who had a spirit of divination who got her master as much gain, who followed Paul and the company for several days and kept, saying, and kept saying, these men are the most high God, hear ye them. They show you the way of salvation, hear thee him. But Paul, being grieved in his spirit, turned and said, come out of her. <laughs> and then he started a whole uproar because they got mad because they lost their money. Now, see, no, Paul, just meant, Paul was able to come out because he had authority in the name of Jesus. The seven sons of Sceva didn't. Why? Because Christ wasn't in them. Christ is in you. If you're born again, Christ is in you. And you can walk in the newness of life. You can walk in the authority of God. You can start singing, demons are afraid of me. Hallelujah. They are. I said they are. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. King James Version says it this way, and he will flee from you. In the Greek, it literally means this. He will flee from you as in terror. Now, I'm saying all this to let you know something. You're not defeated. Satan doesn't have the upper hand. You're not going under. You're the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. The greater one on the inside of you is resurrection life. That's lifting life. It's raising life. It's picking you up from where you are and taking you up higher life. Amen. What do you say? He said, wherefore, you know, that, 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 he, that, he, that we're raised up with him, Ephesians chapter 2. We're raised up with him and made to sit with him in heavenly places. Though we're in this world, we're not of this world. I walk according to a different set of laws. You walk according to a different set of laws. You walk according to the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. I'm facing financial death. Oh, you walk according to the laws of heaven. I'm facing physical things. You walk according to the laws of heaven. Now, you have to speak those laws and act on those laws to enforce them. How many know the laws of physics? One of the laws of physics is to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction so you take two balls two hard like big marbles and you take one and slam into the other then there is an action that's slamming into it but there is an equal and opposite reaction to that energy in physics but if you don't slam the balls together if you don't move one of the balls into the other guess what that law is there but it's not in operation there will be no equal and opposite reaction because there was no action and there are laws in the kingdom of heaven that do not work for people because they don't put it into action. The centurion came to Jesus. And Jesus asked him what he wanted. He said, well, my servant's at home. He's dying. I want you to heal him. Jesus said, I'll come to your house. He says, no. He said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He knew he just needed the action. Jesus to speak. His faith. See, his, really, his faith was the action that caused the equal and opposite reaction, the healing power of God released. Well, how do you know that? Because Jesus said, go your way, your faith, you know, according to your faith, be it done unto you. According to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith. He didn't say, because I'm the son of God. He said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. He got the answer. Because he released his faith, which released God's power. And see, we can get the greater one. We can get the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. We can walk in newness of life because Christ is in us, the hope of his glory, by beginning to say what the word says about us in that state. I haven't seen a runner yet. I'm going to keep preaching until people start running. Maybe not this week. You're going, some of you gotten tired of running. Some of you don't, want, don't feel like rejoicing anymore. Come on now. Don't feel like shouting anymore. The devil took your shout. Why did he take your shout? So he'll shut you up. Why does he want to shut you up? So you won't speak. Why does he want you not speaking? Because you won't declare what the Bible says about you. He doesn't want you putting the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus into operation. He wants you to shut up. My, my, uh. My pastor's father-in-law used to say, he said, Brother Betty, how you doing? He said, shouting the victory. 
some of you need to start saying when people say, what's going on? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is working in me. I'm telling you, it's my hope of glorious things to come. And glorious things are happening all around me. Glory to God. Blessings are coming my way. They're all over me. Hallelujah. What if I don't believe it? Just keep talking. You've been talking to other stuff long enough. You see what you got. That went over big. Isn't it amazing that people don't think there's anything wrong with saying what the devil says? Now, worry is just, it's just fear. And oper it's, it operates on the same principles of faith. Fear and worry operate the same way. You're speaking them. Now, come on now. now you, some of you folks are worry bugs. Now, I, now I grew up. Now, when um, my brother got out of the Air Force, came on, got married, he bought a house. There were two houses in between our house and his house. My mom would get up all, every night. Because he, he, he wasn't living for the Lord. He was going down to the Jolly Roger, downtown Greenville. East Carolina, Greenville, North Carolina, the Jolly Roger, get it? Now, the Jolly Roger, the, it's the cross, skull and crossbones is the Jolly Roger. Okay, the pirate logo. Y'all got that now? All right, just got it. Anyway, get into the Jolly Roger nightclub to hear the Tams or the you know, the embers or, you know, the band of Oz or whatever. <laughs> the embers are still running around. The band of Oz are still running around. They go out on the platform like this now. They sing, East, they sing Carolina beach music, all right? Uh, Joe Pope is dead. Somebody took over him. That man was two days old in dirt back in the 70s. I'm telling you right now. Had that real... You know, he had a real graspy voice. But anyway, that has nothing to do with, with anything other than that's, he'd be out in nightclub and all that kind of stuff, you know. And my mom would go up every night and look out the window until he got home. You see a car in the driveway and, you know, would wait and couldn't go to sleep until he got and drove up in the driveway. Bobby, he's in, there upside down in some ditch where, somewhere drowned. What are you basing that on? What? Facts do you have that they have left Greenville, drove to Aden, turned upside down in the Catentina Creek ditch, and are drowned? You just took a thought that this enemy sent. Worry is nothing but taking unreal thoughts and meditating on them. Now, you can meditate on them long enough, it'll kill you. Elvis. You go study Elvis's life. Elvis used to say, they said, J.D. Sumner, how many remember his backup group? It used to be J.D. Sumner in the stamps. J.D. Sumner said this. He said, if I heard him say it once, I heard him say it 10,000 times that he would never live past the age of his mother. Elvis died the same age his mother died. He worried. He spoke fear. He spoke unbelief until it became a reality in his life. Yet we come over here and say, say what God's word says. People say, ah, oh, that's, that's mind, science, religion. Give me that mind, science, religion. No, I'm sorry, that's the wrong song. Anyway. Just joking. Actually, it's the Bible. We're to say what God says. If God says it, then it's... If what God says is true, then it's good enough for me to say it. Come on now. I know people don't like to hear that, but it's true. That they, that those same people have no problem saying what the devil's saying. You get an ache. Oh, I've got cancer. How do you know? Because i got an ache. And you heard a thought. I had a thought. I had a premonition. It's the devil. Why don't you just say, well, 1 Peter 2.24 says, by the stripes I was healed. I'll just say what the Bible says about me. There's a law working in me called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is working in my body. Why don't you say that? No, we're going to go say what the devil says. You're going to die. Grandma died. Aunt Louise died. Uncle Henry died at the same time. I'm going to die. Why don't you change what you say? You don't have to live like Aunt Louise and Uncle Henry and Aunt Dorothy or whoever else. My, now, my wife's family has some names. Her grandma was Goldie Runell. Goldie Runell. And then Susie, because Susie got the Goldie, 
and she got and then the other one was Caddy Sue. So Janie's sister Susie got the Goldie Sue name. Janie was so thrilled <laughs> that her daddy wouldn't let her mama name her Caddy Brunel. Some of y'all old country folk know those kind of names, you know. Caddy Runell. Can you imagine? Lord, have mercy. I might not have married her. Anyway. <laughs> I love you, but you're going to have to have a name change, girl. <laughs> She's not in here right now to defend herself, so I said that. She don't watch it. Anyway. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Try three. He got two strikes in the office this morning. He's out. <laughs> Let's, the Bible says, even as though he was raised from the dead, let us also walk in newness of life. That means we, ne did you ever hear Jesus say, my God, we're all going to die. Now, the disciples showed up one day in the boat and said, we're going to die. And he rebuked them. Say, where's your faith? Yeah. Stood up and calmed the storms. Yeah. What do you mean, where's your faith? He said, let us go over to the other side. Yeah. The storm didn't matter. Jesus already said, let us go over to the other side. Right. So he went to sleep because he's going to the other side. He didn't get up with them and start, oh, Father, I've been doing what you told me to do. And the disciples just showed up. The boat's full of water. We're going to die out here if you don't do something. That's not what Jesus said. He rebuked them for lack of faith because he had already given the word. Let us go to the other side. Well, what happened if the boat sank? He would just walked over there. And they could have too because Peter walked on the water until he let the storms get in his way. Don't let the storms get in your way. Let's walk, let's walk in the newness of life. Let's walk out of the life on the inside. Let it govern what we say. Come on now. The life of God will govern what you say. And it'll, it, it wants to speak faith. Amen. God's already dealt you the measure of faith. There's a faith already on the inside of you that came in you with the life of God. We can develop it. We can strengthen it. But let's start living from there. Anybody can live and, oh, my God, what are we going to do? It don't take any effort at all to go, oh, my God, what are we going to do? We're all going to die. That don't take any effort. As a matter of fact, the devil's over there going, yeah, you got it, boy. Come on. Come on. Say it again. Because he wants to destroy you. But I found out over in Hebrews chapter 12, there's a grandstand. And Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And King David and all the saints of the past, hallelujah, are in the grandstands of heaven cheering us on, hallelujah. Are you here with me? And it says, therefore, let us look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's live out of the life of God on the inside of us. Let's live out of the faith that he's imparted into us. Let's speak the way the Bible has us speak. Let's talk like Jesus. It's so powerful and so effective that one day they brought the, the, the disciples in to... Um, to uh, try them, and they stood up and, and rebuked them and gave them their answer. And the Bible says this, they took note of them that they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they'd been with Jesus. The woman, the little girl, Peter, at the trial of Jesus, kept trying to say, you're with one of them. He said, no, I'm not. He kept saying, you're with them. No, I'm not. He said, your speech betrays you. And then he started cussing, tried to cover up. He'd been hanging around Jesus for three years. He, ch he changed. You hang around with the master. You hang around with his life. You hang around the things of God. You let the life, of the, the law, the spirit of life of Christ Jesus get on you, and you'll start talking to him. And I don't mean just stop cussing. We then have the same spirit of faith. As it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe. Therefore speak. Glory to God. Can you shout, can you shout glory? glory? Hallelujah. Let's stand up. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for the service. We speak life over this congregation. In the mighty and majestic and wonderful name of Jesus. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, 
P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.